New and innovative technology continues to emerge, allowing urologists to better and more accurately detect and treat prostate cancer. Today, I will be sharing my personal experience with the Promaxo MRI system, which we have had up and running in our practice since June of this year. On the patient side, I'll be getting you up to speed with how the technology works and the benefits of undergoing a prostate biopsy with the system. For our listeners who are urologists, I will also be covering how we were able to implement the system in the office setting, along with some of the minimal facility requirements in preparation, how it has fit into our clinic workflow, considerations for performing low-field MRI in a patient who has an implant, as well as how we are gearing up to utilize the system soon in performing in-office targeted focal ablation for prostate cancer. So stay tuned. So the big question is this, how can men and those who care for them better educate themselves regarding prostate health, the conditions that affect the prostate, and the latest technology in managing these conditions? That is a question, and this podcast will provide the answers. On the podcast, we'll be chatting with experts, innovators, and leaders in the field of urology, sharing useful information with the general public to improve their lives and increase their overall health. My name is Dr. Garrett Pullman, and welcome to the Prostate Health Podcast. The Prostate Health Podcast is for informational purposes only. Nothing in this podcast should be construed as medical advice. By listening to the podcast, no physician-patient relationship has been formed. For more information and counseling, you must contact your personal physician or urologist with questions about your unique situation. One of the benefits I've experienced in hosting the Prostate Health Podcast is that it has allowed me the opportunity to stay up on the latest technology available when it comes to prostate health, including both BPH and prostate cancer. As it turns out, Many of my patients are listeners of the podcast, so they appreciate that I offer many of the treatments we cover here on the show. I also have some listeners who will ultimately travel in from out of state to see me for potential treatment as well. And there's something to be said about that no like, and trust factor with the podcast you follow. I've been able to stay at the forefront in my field in implementing new technology to offer patients. So how did I hear about the Promaxo MRI system? It was actually Josh Miller who initially approached me. I first knew Josh going back to when he was at Procept. He helped us get set up with aqua ablation. So when he was hired on by Promaxo, knowing that I'm excited about new technology and often the first to market with many of the new devices and treatments that are available, I was the first urologist he contacted in his territory to implement the Promaxo MRI system, which was around the end of January of 2023. The Promaxo MRI system is really the first of its kind, a single-sided, low-field MRI system with an open design to accommodate patients of all sizes. It is FDA cleared for targeting prostate lesions. How it works is regions of interest from a patient's MRI images are mapped out. The Promaxo MRI system is then used to localize the suspicious lesions and obtain the location or coordinates of each target within the prostate. Using a fixed grid template, prostate biopsies are taken through the perineum without the need for a rectal probe. Before teaming up with Promaxo, for the patients who have an abnormal prostate MRI, I had previously been performing exclusively transrectal ultrasound-guided fusion prostate biopsies, and I performed these in the hospital setting. There were certainly several challenges I saw using the ultrasound-guided fusion system, including registration of two different modalities, taking a three-dimensional MRI and trying to fuse it with a two-dimensional ultrasound. Also, with the ultrasound-guided fusion system, you can get some gland deformation from the rectal probe. There's also a higher infection rate with a transrectal biopsies compared to a transperineal approach. It also made sense from an economic standpoint, bringing it into the clinic setting with less cost to the patient, while at the same time, better reimbursement for the provider. With the Promaxo MRI system, you are taking the high field MRI images, which are obtained in the same transverse orientation as the low field Promaxo MRI, so 3D to 3D with less registration errors, than the MRI ultrasound registration. You also have a transperineal grid, which I feel makes the targeting and guidance process relatively easier. Patients also certainly appreciate getting to avoid the transrectal probe in the rectum for the procedure. You certainly have some flexibility in terms of where you want to use the system. Not only can it be utilized in the hospital and surgery center, but it can also be employed in an office setting. At Carney Urology Center, we decided to set up the system in our clinic. With its small footprint and the fact that it does not require significant facility upgrades to install it, it was an easy install. I believe the minimum room requirement is a 10 by 10 foot room. Our system easily fits in a 10 by 12 foot room in the clinic. 
We just added a 220 volt plug in the room and we were ready to go. As far as the procedure table, the most common one being used for the Promaxo biopsies is the Avant Torino 550 table, which is the one we ended up going with. It is easy to move around and the piston type stirrups for lithotomy attach easily to the side rails of the table. From a workflow standpoint, it has been pretty seamless in the clinic setting and I can be efficient. I'm able to see other patients while they are performing the MRI scan and registration process. Then I'm able to pop back in to take the biopsies, which takes about 8 to 10 minutes. For practices looking to bring the Promaxo MRI system into their facility, questions come up about what protocols to have in place to assure safety in scanning patients with MRI. MRI has been utilized in the clinical setting for close to four decades now with an excellent safety profile when appropriate guidelines are followed, with the predominant factor for assuring safety being the screening protocol prior to the patient undergoing an MRI, which primarily involves determining presence of metallic implants. Depending on the implant, MRI may be contraindicated for a patient with the metallic implant. With utilizing the Promaxo MRI system, the patient has already undergone an initial 3-tesla multiparametric prostate MRI and were noted to have a suspicious lesion on MRI qualifying them for the Promaxo MRI transperineal targeted biopsy. So every patient has already gone through a rigorous screening process at the hospital with their initial 3-tesla multiparametric prostate MRI. Now, with that being said, it is still important for urologists to empower themselves with the essential knowledge to perform MRI exams confidently and safely in their practice. We utilize an MR safety checklist prior to performing the MRI, which was provided to us by Promaxo. It is worth noting that the Promaxo MRI system is a low-field MRI. Compared to the initial 3-Tesla MRI that the patient had underwent at the hospital, the Promaxo MRI system has a 0.065 Tesla magnetic field only a fraction of the 3T MRI. MRI systems with lower static magnetic fields inherently produce lower translational attraction and torque as such create reduced magnetic field interactions for metallic implants. There has been no reports of a magnetic field related injury to a patient with a passive implant labeled MRI conditional up to 3 Tesla. Also for passive implants labeled as MRI conditional at 1.5 and or 3 Tesla, performing an MRI exam at a lower field strength will not result in an unintended change in function of the device, regardless of the direction of the static magnetic field. For MRI conditional passive implants that have functional components, such as programmable cerebral spinal fluid shunt valves or other similar devices, it is necessary to follow the specific conditions indicated in the MRI labeling. So again, for our practice, it has been relatively straightforward to be able to confidently and safely utilize low-field MRI in the office setting. So again, this is obviously a technology I'm excited about, now being able to offer the Promaxo MRI system in the office setting. I'm also looking forward to future add-ons such as the integration of robotics with the system. Also, as the software continues to be updated, the engineers at Promaxo continue to shave off time on the registration and scanning process, continuing to make the procedure even more efficient. Moving forward, I'm also thrilled that the system will help in incorporating in-office targeted focal therapies for prostate cancer, which have been gaining in popularity for select patients that are appropriate candidates. Targeted focal therapy achieves cancer control by targeting the lesions or the regions of the cancer and avoids damage to the surrounding tissue, thus minimizing side effects which are common to radical treatments such as urinary leakage and sexual dysfunction. So far, our practice has identified both cryotherapy and laser ablation as treatment modalities that we are able to offer in the office setting with the precision guidance of the Promaxo MRI system. Men and their loved ones are becoming increasingly more proactive in learning about and seeking out the latest technology for prostate cancer treatment. They're even willing to travel out of state if needed to get the treatment that best aligns with their personal preferences. Certainly for any of our listeners of the podcast who are seeking out this technology, they can reach out to Carney Urology Center PC to inquire about it. We're in the middle of the United States on Interstate 80, a two and a half hour drive from Omaha and four and a half hours from Denver. We also have nearby daily flights from Dallas and Denver. We would love to help out. Well, thank you for joining me today on the podcast. It has really been rewarding being able to help educate our listeners on prostate health. When I started the podcast, I never would have been imagined that we would already have listeners in over 140 countries at this point. You're all awesome and I congratulate you on being proactive about you or your loved one's prostate health. We also have many urologists, oncologists, 
radiation oncologists and primary care providers that tune in to stay up on the latest technology available for their patients as well. I'm wishing you all the best. Thanks again. Thank you again for listening to the Prostate Health Podcast. For those of you wanting to dive in even deeper, make sure to check out the Prostate Health Academy, which offers comprehensive and easy to navigate lessons that I have prepared for you. There's also an active private community forum, and I am there every day providing support, insight, and answering questions. To learn more, just go to www.prostatehealthacademy.com and click on join now. Well, that's it for today. We will see you at the next episode.